I challenge my Discord community to show me their spookiest Halloween renders for their chance to win a cash prize. So today we're going to be reviewing some of their work and of course crowning the winner. But before we jump into this, if you want to join in on these monthly challenges or you just want a place to connect with other artists, there's going to be a link down in the description and of course on the screen as well. It's completely free to join so you've got nothing to lose. Now I should mention that I haven't seen any of these renders yet so it's all going to be a complete surprise. I'm pretty excited to jump in so let's do it. Oh wow, cool particle effects. Oh, this is awesome. I, I don't think that Michael did the sound effects on this. That can't be him, right? Whoa. That was so cool. I, I think on my screen it's a little bit low quality. I don't know if that's the render itself. There is a bit of noise in the background here, but look at the amount of detail in the background and it's almost like illustrated. Now this, this is so cool. Lots of character movement, lots going on, different camera angles. And then it was, was that meant to switch from daytime to nighttime? I'm not sure if that was intentional or if it was like maybe like a glitch or something, but well done, man. This was such a cool entry. You know, I love being able to look over these and immediately tell just how much effort has gone into doing it. You know, this is not only character animation, but it's sound effects and you've got effects with the little pot that's cooking up, brewing, whatever you want to call it. Now, look, if I had to find something to be super picky about with this, I'd say that maybe with what potion is being brewed within that pot, maybe it has stuff spilling outside of it. Maybe you could have thrown in a, a small little liquid simulation or something. But look, honestly, that's, that's at a stretch. Like, this is a really nice render and based on the fact that you already have some reactions to your submission in the discord channel everyone else really likes this render you've done a great job this one is from ismail I, I don't know if i'm pronouncing that right but let's take a look at it anyways well this is a really interestingly colored one we've got some sound effects in here too what an interesting looking character I really do like the moody vibes on this one. It's such a unique character, especially for like a Halloween theme. But one of the best things about having a character-based submission is that you really got to emphasize the lighting and I think they've done an awesome job on this one. It's nice and foggy and dark and then it sort of brightens up and you can still see everything that's going on. We've got some flashing in the background. This is all really sick. It is kind of a short animation, but man, this, this has been a fun one to watch. It's definitely not something that I expected to be entered into this challenge. It's probably going to be one of the most unique ones, and I really appreciate that. I do feel like there could have been a little bit more character movement in it. The sound effects are great. It really brings some depth to it with the lighting and stuff as well. But I do wish that there was maybe some, I don't know, reaching out towards the camera or just a little bit more action involved in it to make it feel a little more scary just because it's a Halloween theme. So let's move on to the next. All right, next up we have MJ who's put in a sculpt or what looks like a screenshot of a sculpt at least. Wow, look at the detail that's gone into this one. Whilst I think you have to step back and really appreciate just how much work has gone into creating this character, all the little details that have gone into the little folds of the skin. When it comes to characters, or I feel like when you're doing character submissions, it is super important to make sure that you put some emphasis around the lighting rather than just the character itself. I'm not sure if you ran out of time with this one or didn't know how to texture it or light it or something like that. Perhaps that's not something you usually do. But look, as I said, you do have to appreciate the work that has gone into creating this character because it is really cool and it definitely fits within the Halloween theme. But yeah, look, just, just next time, keep it in mind that maybe you can mess around with different lighting on this character to emphasize different parts of the face or it, it doesn't really matter which kind of parts of the character you do emphasize. Just maybe make sure that it feels like it's a little bit more than a screenshot from the project and like there's been a little bit more thought and effort that's gone into submitting. But look, I respect the hell out of you being able to do this because there's no way that I could sculpt something in that kind of detail. So thank you so much for submitting. All right, so let's take a look at our next render. We'll chuck the sound on for this one. All right, very dark and moody scene. Whoa. Oh, the character's shaking and stuff too? That is a nice little detail to throw. I feel like I have to watch this one again. I love that we have a main light off to the side that's casting just enough light so you can sort of see the outline of it, but not too much until it's revealed. 
That is awesome. I feel, I almost feel like now I want to watch more. I want to, I want to know what happens next. And that is the exact reaction that you want when someone watches your animation. You want to kind of reel them in so that they want more. And this has done that. The only thing, the one thing that I have to pick apart with this is that the character has some rope that's like tied around it. And when you see that it's kind of breathing in and shaking, the rope is kind of entering in and out of the chest piece, I guess, the hole in the chest, whatever you want to call it. That is the only thing that I can think of to pick apart about this. The character looks scary, definitely fits within the theme. I want to know what happens next. The lighting is awesome. Um, well, there's even like a car in the background I just noticed too. There has been a lot of work that has gone into this scene and you can really tell. We've got some light flickering on the, the head from the, the light up top as well. This is just so well done. Next up, we have another image submission. I don't think this is Halloween themed at all. Look, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. It's pretty obvious that this doesn't have much of a Halloween theme to it. It doesn't look like there's much texture work that has gone on. I'm not too sure why this was submitted or whether you were perhaps trying to focus on creating God rays or something for the first time, but yeah, look, I, I can't say too much. This doesn't really have anything to do with Halloween. All right, moving on to our next submission from Marina. It looks like we have another very cartoonish, illustrative kind of one. Wow, this is so cool. The camera movement is a little bit unique. Oh, you got me at the end. I really wanted to go through that door. I'm not sure if it was meant to be like a, a smooth animation or whether it was attached to a character that was walking. But for me with an animation like this, I just kind of feel like it would have been cool to have a little bit smoother movement. If you wanted some extra movement around the camera, even just adding like a wiggle or, you know, some sort of subtle movement. But apart from that, like it's it's really hard to pick apart this render because it's such a cool style. Um, you know, there's a lot of effort that's gone into having all these different models and texturing for those models. Like it's, it's really cool and it obviously fits within the Halloween theme super well. And it almost makes me want to give it a go myself, but I'm not sure I could do it as well as you can. All right, cool little intro. Wow. Very good emission here. Some chromatic effects. That's cool. So I like that we have some particle effects going on and some flickering of that glow. It's not just glows that are just kind of static and thrown in there to create lighting of some kind with like very little effort. You've got god rays or fog going on that really emphasizes that light being shown through. Shining through, who knows. The camera movement isn't just panning back, but it's creating like a, a wide lens by changing the focal length, which just kind of brings more of the scene in to show a lot more of the effort that's been put into the environment and stuff. It looks like it's maybe opening up a portal or something, which is cool. It leaves a lot to the imagination. It doesn't necessarily just throw it all in your face, but it lets you kind of create the story for yourself. And the sound effects are really cool as well. So thank you for your submission, man. This is awesome. Next up, we have Asan who's done a, another image submission for this one. Oh, this is cool. I like that there's a sign in the background, a noose there. The only thing I feel like it's missing is perhaps a little bit of blood stains on the floor or something. It's, it's definitely Halloween themed. Uh, the lighting does feel a little bit inconsistent though. There's a light that's shining onto this skeleton here. There's a light that's kind of shining through only a little bit onto the noose up here. And I guess I can see some light coming over from the top left direction, but maybe it would have made more sense if there was light coming through this window. Once again, a problem with the pumpkins is that there is light inside them, but not enough emissive glow from them. Not uh, There is a little bit of an effect on the environment around it, but it just feels like it could be intensified just a little bit more. And the hand reaching out from the coffin, I assume, there's some nice glow going on around the hand, a nice red tint to it, but... Once again, maybe if there was like some fog in the scene or a little bit more glow, just to emphasize the lighting that's going on. I feel like it's kind of easy to just chuck glows on things and call it a day, but you have to remember that that is a light source of some kind and it's going to affect the things around it. Next up, we have McCrellan with a eight second submission. This is a very nice scene. 
Oh. Wow. Okay, cool. I feel like I just have to kind of take that in for a second. That That's a really cool scene. The scale of the moon is epic because it's casting light onto the environment around it. Um, the red tint is pretty sick. I do feel like it would have been cool to have even just the littlest bit of panning towards that moon, movement within the water, even if it's all super subtle. This is an awesome scene. Like you, you can't take away from the fact that the lighting is perfect. It matches the theme perfectly. It's creepy. There's, you know, there's people hanging from trees, which is very scary stuff. The texturing of the trees and stuff is sick. Um, you know, you can't see the characters, but they're very silhouetted, which is perfect because there's so much light coming from behind them. And yeah, I, look, I can't pick this apart too much. I, I just feel like this would have been nice to have a little bit of movement. This is a great scene. Awesome job. Next up, we have Sadiok, I think. Those names are really tripping me up. And we have a vertical submission here. Let's take a look. Darkened hallway leading towards a, not the clock, but the room. He's looking back. Okay. Oh, that just got very dark. Very noisy, dark scene. Is that water? Okay. Lots of flickering on that water. The storyline behind it is very dark. It definitely fits in within that theme. I think it almost gets a little bit too dark. Like when you're crossing into the other room here, it almost fades completely to black. That noise there, I assume is meant to be light. Fighting noise in your scenes can be really difficult, especially within a theme like this. So I'm trying to be a little bit more forgiving and understanding, but it does take away from the render a little bit and that hand coming through, there's light onto those hands, but the floor is completely black still. So it just looks, there's too much contrast, you know? The, I can't tell if it's water or blood, but there is just a little bit too much flickering and movement. Next up we have Araya, Aria. These, these names are gonna f kill me. Oh, it's a Jigsaw one. I love Jigsaw. What a good horror series. Okay, a very slow pan in. Oh, that was it. I think given that you've taken the time to render this out as an animation, if you're already gonna put that effort in rather than submitting like just a still image or something, I feel like we could have had a little bit more going on. You know, maybe even towards the end, if he jumps out towards the camera or something like that, just to feel like this has a little bit more of a storyline to it than just we're in a room with Jigsaw, we have some scary lighting going on. Or even if you have like the, the telephone ringing or the, the TV has some static that comes up, just something that feels like it gives the animation a little bit more life. Next up, we have Aditya Sharma or Aditya Raj. I'm not sure what you prefer to go by, but let's, let's open this one up. Okay, it's very fast pace. What happened to the frame rate there? That was definitely done in post. Very foggy scene. The texturing is cool. Lots of trees going on. I like the emission that's coming towards the camera and reflecting off it. Whoa. Wow. Everything just switched up like crazy. Suddenly went to night time. Whoa. Okay. Is that an eyeball? Oh, still going. Does that loop? No, it doesn't loop. That, if you were going to cut to the end there and kind of return back to how it was, it would have been cool if you made that a loop. Picking apart something would be when it kind of just stops here to present the title for it. Maybe you could have just left this as static rather than that little bit of, it's, it's not even like movement. It's kind of like jumps of like frame rate or something, which is just a little bit jarring. But apart from that, like the scene itself is really cool. You're heading towards what looks like some kind of neon structure that eventually just pushes you back and changes your whole environment around you. So to put that much effort into not only thinking of what's going to happen, but having the background and environment reflect that is an awesome job. All right, let's take a look at our next submission. We have another vertical one here with a little bit of sound. Okay, not, not too much going on with this one. 
And is that a screen? Is that a screen recording of it? I don't know what that little watermark is. All right, so look, the first thing I have to say is obviously not a whole heap of effort has gone into this. I'm not sure if it was a time constraint thing or, um, you know, perhaps a rendering issue, but it looks like, yeah, look, I, I would have loved to see a little bit more go into this. And the texturing is all really nice, especially on the ground. We've got some rocks and debris and stuff going on. Um, the glowing halation and stuff from the car is all really cool. The lighting is, you know, moody and almost cinematic, but anyways, thank you for submitting. All right, this one's called The Cry. Okay, so we have like a first person walking around, scoping out what's going on outside. There's a lot of crying going on, hence the title. Oh, okay. There definitely seems to be a running theme of uh, like jump scares and flash lights. Did he just fall to the ground? What is he doing? Okay, it's chasing after him. Okay. I'm stunned. <laughs> I think you've done an awesome job of making sure that this fits within the Halloween theme. It's obviously very horror based. He goes outside to check out what's going on. The texturing of inside is pretty good, but one problem I am having is when that character is revealed, the texturing of that brick wall is way too big just way too big um when the character comes through at the end and kind of reveals himself to our main hero he just kind of clips through the top of the house which is super jarring especially when you're immediately introduced to that face that's gonna haunt me these have been so fun to watch i feel like i almost don't want this challenge to end next up it looks like we have our first image submission. Wow, this is really cool. It looks to me like you've done a really good job of getting the scale correct. Obviously, you know, that character walking through the, the hallway of skeletons or grim reapers or whatever they are, you can tell you've got the character the right size. That's been done very well. We have some bright emission going on with some fog on in the background. One thing that I think I might have liked to see on this one is just bringing that camera down a little bit lower, maybe putting a little bit more thought into how you're going to texture the ground. It looks quite foggy, uh, almost like he's walking on water, like it's a little bit reflective. As I said, you've done an awesome job of setting the scene up like it's a large scale environment. You've even managed to chuck in a skeleton that doesn't just look like a direct duplicate or copy and paste. Um, this one has like a, a cloak that's kind of covering the head and stuff. Yeah, look, not too much to pick apart with this one. I, I do really like what you've done with it. I'd be interested to see what you're planning to do for the animation, maybe if you were having the character walking along or suddenly finding the environment or that big burst of light just suddenly comes on and it reveals all the stuff going on around him either way thank you so much for submitting all right and here's our next one okay we've got some camcorder vibes some first person vibes okay this is cool He's found some pumpkins and a, a skull. Okay. All right, so we have a wide angle shot here. Immediately, I'm a little bit confused as to why it jumps from filling out the whole screen dimensions wise to kind of cropping to a square. Maybe you could find a better way than completely changing up the resolution of it. Lots of camera shake going on. A little bit of a jump here that maybe didn't it was that like a separate scene or something yeah I'm not, I'm not too sure why that randomly cut maybe you could have found a way to make that just a little bit more seamless or all the one animation because when you start and stop an animation or you fade to black or something like that to me most viewers are going to look at that and immediately find disinterest a reason to scroll away because you just you've taken them out of that environment when we pan through there's a random like glowing circle here i don't know if that's meant to be like a, a ghost orb or something that's the only reason i could think of to maybe fit into the theme but apart from that it kind of looks like you just left a layer on by accident once again with the glowing pumpkins i feel like they would have a lot more of an effect on the environment than just having glows within the eyes that glowing effect is going to cast light onto these pumpkins here the walls and stuff 
Whereas currently you only have the flashlight or a torch or whatever being the main source of light within this scene. Immediately when you throw into the ground, you can kind of see what looks like a, a Voronoi texture or something on the ground, which is just not very realistic. I like that it gives off a little bit of a wave at the end, just looking at the character or something. Cool touch, I like it. So one problem I'm having with this immediately is that because this is done through Instagram, I can't really view this on my computer correctly. So we're gonna bring out the phone and take a look at it. All right, cool. So we got a, a cloth sim being wrapped around like a skeleton or something. It almost looks like a VHS tape, like it's very vintage almost. We've got some glowing emission in the eyes. The skull is ahead. The cloth is kind of moving around on it. Okay, cool. So I'm not sure if this is your first time mucking around with cloth sims or not, but I think you've done a good job. It looks like there's enough resolution in there. Um, I think maybe if you had the, the skeleton moving around, or the ghost moving around a little bit more just to add like a little bit more depth to the animation itself. But you know, I just feel like if I had to pick this apart, maybe I'd ask that there's a little bit more movement to this. Uh, maybe perhaps some more camera angles rather than just the one or two. But look, awesome submission. Thank you again for entering. All right, next up we have a submission from Din. Let's uh, let's pause this before we open it up. And now let's give this a play. Whoa. That pumpkin literally came out of nowhere, hey. I'm getting uh, Toy Story vibes where there's only movement going on when there's no humans around. That's, that's my first thought with this one. Okay, cool. So you've done a good job of putting some sound effects in there as well to kind of match up with what the pumpkins are doing. Maybe you could have put a little bit more emission onto the glowing pumpkins, especially because it is a bit of a darker, moodier scene when that door closes. Just based on how that light would be reflecting onto the camera, maybe there could be like a flare or just some more emission, that kind of thing. I think the most noticeable difference that you could have made is having some more emission on those lights. If you're using EV or something in Blender, it's kind of just as simple as turning on the bloom and that would have made it look just a little bit better. Look, this this is a great submission and yeah, look, just, just boost up that emission, man. I think that'd really just add a little bit extra to this one. All right, and let's move on to the next one from The Rook Studio. Let's dive in. Okay, we've got some music. We have some pumpkins thrown in there and we're panning around a chessboard. Okay, well, that was super quick. So we know this is meant to be a Halloween theme challenge and apart from the pumpkins in there, I'm not seeing too much of like a storyline or structure or a way that this fits into that Halloween theme. Usually when you're watching an animation, you have, you know, a start, a middle, an end, a, a payoff of some kind at the end. And the, the main focus that I'm seeing from this is just kind of panning around a chessboard within a bright reflective neon room. I just don't feel like this fits into the theme as much as it could, but I do appreciate the fact that you've entered into this challenge anyways. I would imagine that the render times on something like this with so many reflections and neon lights and that kind of thing would have been a little bit crazy, but I do think that you could have put a little bit more thought into the composition and the storyline for this one and just find ways to make this fit into the theme a little more than just adding in some pumpkins and calling it a day. Okay, so we're following a car, and now we're in that car. What are we passing? We're in a very scary fo- Oh! Oh! Seem to get out of that car, okay. <laughs> okay, so he finds like a, a haunted house or something. Now this right here is a good example of having enough emissive glow from those pumpkins. And then when we get towards the end here, we can see a little bit of flickering from that denoising, which is okay. And then kind of like a jump scare at the end. So you do have to appreciate the jump scares are gonna be very much so a part of the horror and Halloween theme. When it comes to animation and stuff, when it just stops like that, it does feel a little bit jarring. Perhaps as that door is opening, it would have been cool to see those lights flicker on and off rather than just suddenly cut to black. The the lighting around the, the car driving scene is very realistic. We're only seeing the light that's coming from the, the headlights in the front of the car. 
I do feel like the glowing green from within the car could have been a little bit brighter. No one's sitting there driving in complete darkness. The texturing of all the environment and stuff is awesome. And yeah, once again, maybe just towards the end, having some flickering of the lights and not feeling so jump cut-ish would have been nice. And now it's time to pick the winner of the challenge. For me, being able to sit through and watch all these submissions and see everyone's artwork is truly one of my favorite things about owning this Discord server but one of the hardest is picking the winner. Everyone puts a lot of time and effort into submitting into challenges and I don't want anyone to feel discouraged by the fact that they didn't win. But for me, the winner of this challenge was definitely the submission by LEGO Deep Sea. They definitely didn't leave the character static, they added some little subtle movements to it and it really reeled me into the point where I wanted to go, what's next? I'm gonna be in contact with you shortly so that you can claim your prize and Man, look, everyone here has done such an awesome job at this challenge. So if this is something that you want to join in on as well and have your opportunity to win, make sure you go join the Discord. You can ask for help, you can get feedback on your artworks, or you can just chat about your general interests because we all share the same field. Once again, thank you to everyone who joined in on this challenge, and I can't wait to show you all the next one.